Welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Profit. Hi, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Weddings Unveiled, professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the industry and share with you what we have learned from them and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Today's podcast is brought to you by Care Of. Care Of is a monthly subscription vitamin service that delivers completely personalized vitamin and supplement packs right to your door. It is so super easy. I know it's a new year and so new health goals is a must because guess what? If you don't take care of yourself, how in the heck can you take care of anybody? So this year, make health and wellness a top priority with the help of Care Of monthly subscription vitamin service. Whether you're focused on glowing skin, boosting your energy levels, getting more sleep, or just generally being healthy, you can build a vitamin routine that's made just for you and your health goals. So do something good for yourself and your health this year. They really make it easy to stick to the health-related solutions. So let me tell you, they've got this online quiz that's fun and it's super, super easy. They're going to ask you about your diet, your health goals, your lifestyle choices. It takes like under five minutes to find out your personal scientifically backed vitamin and supplement recommendations. So you can find out where you're lacking with Kara's online quiz and get back on track to reaching your health goals. And I know that it can be super hard to know what vitamins or supplements you should be taking. They're very transparent about what you need and what you don't need. They even have supplement options if you're vegan or vegetarian to match your dietary needs. My favorite thing about this program is the supplement packs. They're customized just for you. So you have one pack that you take each day. You don't have to open up a bunch of bottles and pour out a bunch of pills. It's already done for you, people. It's perfect for those of us who are crazy busy and we've got that on-the-go lifestyle. And of course, you can try your progress with the Care Of app. You got to go over to the website and take this quiz. It is so easy and the results are mind-blowing. So visit TakeCareOf.com and for 25% off your first month of personalized Care Of vitamins, you can use the promo code APCARES. So again, visit TakeCareOf.com and the promo code for 25% off is APCARES. Cares. That stands for Angela Profit Cares. So take your vitamins. Hi, y'all. It's Angela Profit, and thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Weddings Unveiled. Today, I am super excited to introduce you guys to a longtime friend of mine, Lisa Kaiser. And she and I go way, way back when I used to work in healthcare, and we have kept in touch. She has started her own business years ago. I'll have her come on and tell you about that journey. Um, But the main thing with Lisa, she knows everything there is to know about your skin. And in the bridal industry, in the wedding industry, and in the image industry as a planner or designer or a vendor or even a bride, it's really important to take care of your skin. And although I don't do it like I should all the time, with people like Lisa in my life, it helps me um, treat my skin just, you know, every once in a while. But there's a lot of myths out there that people think, especially on their wedding day, things they should do, things they shouldn't do. So we're going to clear all those up today. So I want to bring on Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Thanks for joining us today. Hello. Thanks for having me. I am very excited to get to spend some time with you today. Yay! (laughs) So before we jump in, if you will share with our listeners a little bit about your background in healthcare and how you got to aesthetics and what exactly that means to someone who doesn't know what that is. Sometimes I take for granted I was in healthcare because I have 
clients are like, what? What can you just speak English? Like, what exactly does that mean? So take us down that journey of like how you got where you are today. Absolutely. So I grew up in Oklahoma. I'm an Oklahoma girl. I went to the University of Tulsa in um, Tulsa, Oklahoma. And after I graduated from nursing school, I decided I was wanting to move to Nashville for the music business. Back in the day, there was a show um, on the Nashville Network that Jim Ed Brown hosted called Be a Star. And so, of course, back after just graduating from college, I thought, you know, I can be a nurse in Nashville just as easy as I can in Oklahoma. So um, loaded up the truck and moved here and started working at, at the time, Baptist Hospital. Um, it's now St. Thomas Midtown and worked in the ER there for a number of years, which is where our paths crossed. Um, during the time I was working in the emergency department, um, the beauty of working three 12 hour shifts is I had some time on the side and I was working a lot with songwriters here in town, was able to do demo work, which was kind of my passion. I loved working with songwriters and kind of listening to what their vision was and getting them good demo tapes to pitch to some of the um, folks here in town. So fast forward, um, I ended up going to a program in Atlanta at Emory for wound and ostomy care. Um, There was a hospital in Clarksville that had recruited me to be their wound care nurse. And at the time, I wasn't even really sure that that was a specialty. I wasn't exactly sure what all that involved. Um, But basically, I worked in acute care in the hospital and was consulted by physicians and surgeons for patients who had acute and chronic wounds. So that could be anywhere from burns to surgical wounds that weren't healing and diabetics, you name it. So I developed this passion for the skin, and it was just fascinating to me what the body could do and creating the perfect environment for the body to be able to heal. And... Um, So I worked in acute care and did wound care, worked at Williamson Medical Center and started their acute care wound care program and did that for a number of years. And then um, all along this course, I had twin boys. So around this time, the boys started um, driving and started getting close to college. And so I started kind of reflecting on really what I wanted to do. If I wanted to go back into acute care or how I wanted to pursue that path and the passion of taking care of the skin. So I kind of went to the polar opposite end and went into aesthetics. So I started researching programs, trying to decide what I wanted to do. As an RN, I could have gone directly into injectables and lasers and um, just gone straight into that path. But in my gut, I wanted to know the physiology behind it. And I wanted to look at the whole person and not just one aspect of it, and be able to help people with their long-term journey on skin, their skin path. So um, I decided to go to the Aveda Institute in Franklin, which very much was in alignment with my philosophy. I have a very holistic approach to um, clients and being able to take care of people um, long-term, I think that's why I liked wound care in the hospital is because it was a, a relationship that you created with, um, with that client and you were able to work with them through different phases of their life, just like the skin. Our skin's going to change in different phases, whether it's pregnancy, whether it's, you know, cold winter days in Nashville like today. So it's just working with people as, as all along that journey. So when I finished the Aveda program, I decided to work solely as an esthetician for a little over a year because I just wanted to do facials and I wanted to do a lot of facials and really, really see different types of skin and start evaluating products and see what I believed in. And so after a process of just doing aesthetics, I ended up uh, moving to our location where we're at now in Bell Mead and was able to open my practice here and able to start adding in more medical treatments. I have my medical director now, so I'm able to do more injectables and things like microneedling and deeper chemical peels. But it was really important for me to start from the beginning 
and start with what people are going to be doing at home so I can better educate people um, and be there for them whenever they needed me throughout all those different phases. That's awesome. I had no idea, though, that you... I knew you worked in the ER, and I knew you did some wound care stuff. So I worked for an infectious disease physician, and which really played into a lot of the wound care. I learned about that um, working with AIDS patients and people that were just very sick. Um, and it's amazing, like, what the hyperbaric chamber... Like, I had no clue what all that was. And two quick stories that kind of tie into that is um, my sister has ALS, and... We, Vanderbilt diagnosed her. My gosh, it's going on close to five years now. They gave her six months to live. And so she went to Russia, had stem cell replacements, did like very unconventional things that like aren't really good with my parents who are like super old school. I think they believe in it now because, you know, she's alive and she her brain works just fine. Um, but I, I never really understood how powerful the hyperbaric chamber could be. And so we actually found a physician in Brentwood who is way better than Russia and quite like a third of the price um, to get stem cells from your fat that your body produces and taking that out, reprocessing your own cells and treating them and then re-injecting them and then laying in the hyperbaric chamber. She goes three times a week, I think for two hours, and it's a certain pressure. And so watching what that oxygen and how the stem cells like kind of become more alive and that helps with pain. And I kind of understood just from being around wound care and things like that. But it's just, it's really, it is incredible with like how it can heal so much. You don't realize how like our there's so much pollution around us and um and then another story is Aveda so um I'm in the entrepreneur organization and years ago we had a guy that was coming and the headline of the talk was the daymaker and so I don't read a lot I do a lot of listening I love podcasts I love audible and I'm like Yes, I'm going to sign up for this. So they have a lot of educational opportunities every month. They're usually at 7 a.m., which I work late into the night, so I don't do 7 a.m.s real well. But this was at 7 p.m., and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm so going to this. And I didn't read about the guy. I didn't know anything. I just thought, and I am totally made this up in my head. I'm like, this guy's going to talk about how to get all your work done during the day. And so, I don't know, I just made that up. But that's not what the talk was about at all. So the talk was about his book and how he um, was just a hairstylist. He's like, I'm just a hairstylist, but I make people's day. And he went through and told us very moving stories about where he started. He started in, he was a valet driver in a small town. And he was um, going to have a hockey scholarship and like very like manly things. And then his, when he was a kid, his aunt took him to some studio in LA where it was like money and Lamborghinis and sexy people. And he's like, I'm going to be a hairstylist when I grow up. And his parents are like, the hell you are. <laughs> you're getting, you're getting your scholarship. Um, but he did, he followed his heart. He followed his passion. A lot of people, um, accused him of being gay, which is much more acceptable now. But still, I guess for a man in the hair industry, the beauty industry, people just assume that. Um, and he's like, I have a wife, I have kids. Um, and he's like, but I know how women need to feel. And I know that women need to feel beautiful on the inside and the outside every single day of their life. And he said, my mentor taught me all of this. And um, he's like, he started this line over in a different country called Aveda. He said it one time, and that's all. And, it, and I think there were probably five women in the room of like 300 men. And it, most men don't know what Aveda is. But if you didn't hear it that one time, you would never know that he now owns Aveda. <laughs> the, the whole thing. Um Super humble guy said that he learned so much from his mentor 
who later got sick. And so that's why he was able to help take over all of the Aveda. He's very passionate about teaching um, people how to, whenever you're with a person, to give them that the best experience. And then he told multiple stories. Um, and the my favorite one was where there was a lady that was a regular. She just came in. You know, the older ladies that like, have the curlers in their hair once a week, like my grandma, <laughs> and like gets their hair set. And he's like, she came in on an off day. And he, he's like, I thought I was off. Is today Thursday? Like, so she comes in, she's a big socialite. And he's like, you know, why are you, why'd you come in today? And she's like, David, I've just had a really bad week. And you always make me feel so good. And so I just, I just wanted to come in. And he said, it was just for a hair wash and a set. I was with her for 50 minutes and we talked about her bad week and, you know, I really wanted to lift her up. And the reason she came in that day was because she was planning to commit suicide that night. And she had written a letter and like a suicide letter. And she said she wanted to feel beautiful in her casket. I mean, I'm like, Everyone in the room was just kind of like, oh, my God, this is kind of crazy. And um, but her sister had called up to the hair salon and said, I just want to tell you, you saved my sister's life. Like she got treatment. And that was just one of the stories that is just like a total tearjerker. And like he showed us like the letter. It's like you can't make this stuff up. And he's like, so when people ask what I do, I say I'm a day maker. And then to take it a step further, and do you know his story about how he had cancer? And so he was living in Hawaii, raising his kids and um, was told, you know, that he was going to die very soon, that he had some type of a bone cancer, I think it was. And he's like, I'm not ready to die. Like, I'm young and I, I'm still helping people and opening salons all over the place. And so he wouldn't take that for an answer. And he went and, you know, just with a few emails was able to get in touch with some of the best doctors around. And he had a photographer completely document his entire process, which I don't think there was a dry eye in that room. And it but the whole point to the story, I know it's a long story, but it was very moving um, that you know, you got to follow your gut and your passion. He's like, I wasn't ready to die. He's like, I've helped so many people, but he didn't really realize how valuable that was until it happened to him and he got sick. And he's like, all these people stepped up to help me and just make sure that, um, you know, we have that family atmosphere, like in all of his salons. And so I, I walked out of there with like a whole new meaning of like Aveda and their school and, and I walked out of there. I'm like, God, I'm a dumbass. Like, I thought this guy was going to teach me how to get my work done during the day. <laughs> Not talk about salon life. But it did really change your perspective on, like, how people view people, especially men, that are, like, serving people in the beauty world and the aesthetics. Um, and so just a little, like, fun background to, like, tie together. If you guys don't know the Daymaker, like, his story really is phenomenal. Um, and that was years ago, like years ago. Um, but one thing, so Lisa reached out to me a couple years ago and she's like, I'm going to start my own business and I just want to reconnect and I've gone to school and I'm going to do this and this and this. And there's, there are, and, and something that I want you guys to understand the difference is you can go to probably any spa and get a facial. You really can. Um, they're they're going to carry different lines, different products, but then you've got the whole medical side, which she had mentioned, you have to have a medical director that oversees the, and it's just different offerings. So the lasers, the injections, and again, I know the difference because I was in healthcare. And so if I'm ever going to have anything done to my face, I'm going to go on the medical side of things. I'm not going to my dentist to get Botox. <laughs> I'm not going to my, I mean, literally, there are den my dentist, <laughs> which I love her dearly, but I'm like, you're not putting a needle in my face. Like, no. And, um, you know, all these different fillers and lasers. And I feel like a lot of people, they like have these parties and it's like, who is sticking you? And like, you can have, this is not about the price it's like oh eight dollars a unit for but and it's like do you really know what that means and 
until a bad experience happens to you or to a friend with, um, I've had plenty of horror stories from brides who tried to get Botox like in their lips or their armpits, or I'm like, why would you do that a week before your wedding? Like, don't do that. No, like start on a regimen at least six months beforehand, which, which Lisa told me that she's like, tell your brides this. And I'm like, okay, that's good. Um, so surrounding myself with people who are experts in their field is important. Um, and there's all these types of myths around injectables and lasers and facials. And so if you could share a few top myths and where it's like, that's not true. Um, not, again, not only for Brad's listening, but everybody out there, you, you need to take care of your skin, especially if you're in this industry a lot of it is image and we are in the public eye and we are speaking and teaching and guiding and leading. And so nobody wants to look at somebody. I mean, even the other day, like my 16 year old niece is like talking about these rapper people because it was like the Grammy time. And she's like, their skin's so perfect, but their hair is disgusting. Like it looks like, you know, these people that have all these dreads and like, I just don't understand how that is clean. And then she was telling me how one rapper, his manager quit because he wouldn't shower and he wouldn't take care of himself. And I'm like, is that a joke? Because I don't follow all that. I'm not in that little hot teen. But then I started to think about it. I'm like, yeah, hygiene's really important. And like, it's just something we get up and do every day. Um, but when you are getting married or you are going on TV or you are doing something special, you should treat your skin to something special. So what are some of those myths that people don't know what they don't know? Yeah, and you're absolutely right. And um, one quick follow-up to the Aveda, your Aveda story, um, which is very near and dear to my heart. They still had the Daymaker as part of the program that I went through. Every single person would find a YouTube video or they would find a passage in a book and every day of class was started with a daymaker. And so his vision lives on. You know, it's, it's legitimately happening in that program every single day. Um, the other um, principles of Ayurvedic medicine, which he was very, very much a proponent in the healing properties. Um, after graduation, we ended up, my husband and I ended up going to Bali. And as part of my graduation present, I had a facial and a massage um, in Bali, specifically because in my gut, I was going to, I was wanting to see, okay, these are the techniques that we learned at Aveda. This is the uh, Ayurvedic massages that we learned. And after the massage, I left there and I immediately wanted to call my school and say, you guys are spot on. It was exactly the way the practitioners in Bali were still doing facial massage and, and practicing Ayurvedic medicine, which just more validated in my gut. Not that I needed more validation of how, how wonderful I felt like the program was, but it was just a neat way to kind of be the icing on top, you know, to have such a good experience there. Um, but to your question, as far as myths, um, yes, there are concerns about having a facial too close to whether it's your wedding or events or a photo shoot. I work a lot with some, you know, models that are going to be doing a photo shoot. And the best thing I can tell people is it depends on the treatment and the facial that you're going to be receiving. Most of the treatments that I do here pre-event are all calming and anti-inflammatory because you don't want anyone to leave red and irritated. Um, for example, I don't do a lot of extractions right before a big event. You just don't want to do that. I don't do anything brand new product wise on someone right before an event, because the last thing you would ever want is an allergic reaction to a product that someone has never used before. Um, kind of the same principle with doing treatments and injectables and things too close. You need to know, have a trial run um, beforehand to know how your skin is going to respond. I do have um, an oxygen treatment that I absolutely love by Intraceuticals. It's an Australian company, um, and its main focus is all on calming the skin and giving a really pretty, beautiful glow. It's all fairly natural products, so I've never had a reaction 
for any to anyone getting the treatment before their um, event, we would use it in Fashion Week a lot. And when you're on a time schedule and you have a very short amount of time with the models, um, you want to make sure that you're going to be doing a treatment that they're not going to have a reaction to on the runway. And so I'm very, very cautious, probably because of you know, as we mentioned that, you know, our, our medical background, um, I know how hard it is for the skin to heal. So I'm very, very, um, uh, on the conservative side for many things. And I like to see what the skin is going to do, um, with products. So you start slowly. If a bride or someone that's having a big major event can start again, you know, as soon as they get engaged, you know, uh, start on a great skincare program those treatments that we do right before the wedding are only going to look better. You know, you're just increasing the ability of the hydration of the skin. And when you're working with your makeup artist, it's going to make the photography, you know, all of that whole game has changed. And you know better than anybody that I know about the high def photography and high def videography and how it will pick up every single little thing. So for men and women, I'm doing many more grooms, you know, for, before their wedding or if they're going to be on TV or a broadcast or something, um, because everything's micro or or magnified on, on screen now. Um, the other thing that I would say is be very, very cautious as far as, um, things you shouldn't do is if you're having a destination wedding, being very, very cautious about getting a facial, it sounds like a great idea, You know, but whenever you're on an island somewhere and you go to get a facial because in theory you think, oh, this is going to be very, very relaxing and they use products or ingredients that you might not be familiar with, um, that can be a recipe for disaster. I tell people not even to use the little samples in the hotel. You know, stick them in your luggage and bring them home when you're home and safe and you can try things and make sure you're not going to have a problem. Take things with you that you know are tried and true on your skin so that you're not, you know, the last thing anybody wants is red puffy or irritated eyes with an allergic reaction. So I have a funny story (laughs) to that. We do a lot of destination weddings. And the last time that something like really kind of bad happened and I was kind of like, holy shit, um, was Jason Aldean's wedding. Jason Aldean is a country singer and we were in Mexico with Brittany, his his beautiful wife, and her skin is amazing. And it's so funny because people think she's such a girly girl with perfect makeup and perfect hair and perfect skin, but she's a tomboy. <laughs> I mean, it, we had so much fun. Um, but she, she woke up the morning of her wedding and her face was so red and so broken out and so puffy. And this is this was a couple years ago. So this was when all those new masks came out. And I, in fact, you're the one, Lisa, that introduced me to Patchology. And um, if you guys haven't tried it, they're amazing. And so there's like these eye Patchology things. But th- I don't even think that was out when her wedding was happening. And so she showed up that morning at the home to get, and thank God, she had flown in this amazing makeup artist. And um, he's like, oh, don't worry about that. Like, I got that covered. And so separately, you know, I took, and I was like, I don't know what the hell Brittany did to her face last night, but it's so red, it's so puffy. Um, it, I don't, it was like, it was like an allergic reaction to something, which is exactly, I think what happened is there was some kind of a mask or something that she had put on. And here we are in Mexico in a foreign country. And, um, you know, I'm like, do you want Benadryl? Do you, and I, so I gave her a Zyrtec and she took that and it did calm down. And the makeup artist, I think he like put like, um, really cold washcloths and ice in her face. So he knew what to do, which I was so thankful the whole time. Like I'm down there setting up for the ceremony and I'm praying. I'm like, dear God, why do you, why are you having to do this to one of my brides today? Like, please just don't do this to me and don't do it to her. Um, and we ran behind almost like two hours with, and we changed the whole schedule around and she had a lot of bridesmaids. And so he went on and like did their makeup while she calmed down, while her skin calmed down, not her. She was like, ah, it's fine. I think I was more worried than she was. I'm like, what the hell did you do? Um, but that's such a great point. And also to like with the weather changes, 
I just know like from my own experience of doing things and not being very well educated, it's like I would schedule a microderm, microderm abrasion appointment, um, you know, two days before I had to go and speak or do some. And then I would get the photography and the video and I was like, oh, you can kind of see everything in my pores. The makeup doesn't set as well. So there's all these things that you can do that you want to get your skin used to so that when you are doing something special, you know how you're going to react. So that is a great point. Um, not everyone can, you can't just walk into any spa and get the oxygen. Um, so if that's something that you're wanting, depending on where you're, you live, that's something that you're going to want to do a little bit of research and make sure that, you know, I'm all about supporting people in school. And like, I remember I had friends, they're like, Hey, I'm in aesthetic school or whatever, esthetician school. Can I try this out on you? I'm like, hell no. <laughs> I, I can ask some people and they're like, but I'll do it for free. I'm like, I don't care. Like I, I need, I, I'm not in, in test mode anymore. Like I'm not in potty training practice mode. Like I'm sure there's some much younger people who, you know, aren't on video a ton who you can go practice on. That's great. And I appreciate the offer, but no, thank you. Um, and I'm, I have horribly sensitive skin, like so sensitive. And so a lot of the stuff that you're talking about, like I've had it done and, and I do want you to touch on cause something new, I don't know how long it's been out, but dermaplaning. And so I've even had people like have derm, derm, derma planning parties which again I believe you have to be at a meta overseen by a medical director like again you can't just walk in and have this done and so the first time Lisa did it I was someone people kept asking me my clients I don't like to recommend people unless I've done it or I've used it I, I only speak from experience I don't have we have people that send us products they're like hey can you use this I'm like I don't know anything about this no I'm not using it no I'm not doing a review like <laughs> I need to like it and see it and which you said that earlier like you wanted to become familiar with the products and how they react on the skin and I appreciate that and I'm sure the clients do too um but just if you will explain like what that is and like what exactly, cause I've had brides ask me and they're like, but isn't that like bad? And I'm like, no, it like gets the layer of your skin off. And the, the few times I've had it done for the next month, people comment on my skin. They're like, Oh my gosh, like, what are you using? I'm like, well, I have a whole skincare regimen. It's just not that. I mean, it's easy to me. I'm like, well, there's this stuff in the morning and, the, and then the older you get, like the more you really have to pay attention to it. So I guess two things. One, talk about the dermaplaning. And then if someone is going from 30s to 40s or 20s to 30s, like what are your recommendations for like keeping your skin healthy? It's mm -hmm, a twofold question. <laughs> so for the dermaplaning, it is a lovely treatment um, for a lot of different reasons and has many benefits. Um, you kind of touched on the exfoliation property, which is what's going to give you that really pretty glow. So the process is um, using a, a sterile stainless steel surgical blade. Um, so you want to go to someone who you feel comfortable having a blade near your face, um, you know, making sure that they've had the training that they need. Um, and what that's going to do is you're going to slowly remove that outer layer of the skin. So when you're removing that, you're also getting that peach fuzz, or it's known as vellus hair, which is the real fine, just um, a very, very, it's, you almost think of like a baby that has those really fine, precious little, you know, hair on their, on, all over their body. Um, we have that on our face, and it can be removed by dermaplaning, it's not a permanent situation where once you remove it, it's, it, it will come back. One of the questions I always get is, will it come back thicker and darker? Um, and no, that's not the case. It will come back as the vellus fine baby hair again. Um, it's just a difference in the type of hair that we have. That's the vellus hair. And when we have terminal hair, that is our eyebrows and the hair on the top of our head that's more thick and coarse. So it just is a difference in the way the hair is, is made and the follicles in the hair. Um, a lot of times people will come every eight weeks or so to have dermaplaning. It can be added to a facial. 
which is lovely because what the other thing that's going to do is it's going to help all of your products penetrate better because you're just kind of breaking that layer, you know, so that your active products that you're using should be able to penetrate deeper into the skin. Um, as far as routines at different stages, one of the things that I always recommend starting in your 30s is a retinol. And retinol kind of gets a bad rap sometimes. And many times I feel like it's because sometimes people are placed on too high of a percentage and they have a very strong dry reaction to their skin. And then they say, this isn't working for me. I'm, I'm having a reaction to it. So I just need to quit it. Um, retinol and retinoic acid is one of the most tried and true products in the aesthetic industry. It's been around a long, long time. It's basically a vitamin A. What that's going to do is it's going to help cellular turnover in our skin. And as we age, that cellular turnover slows down. So the vitamin A and the retinoic acid or the retinol, depending on the brand and the type, um, that's going to help that cellular turnover and give you that really pretty healthy glow as well. Um, getting with a good practitioner who can evaluate your skin and recommend which type of retinol or retinoic acid you should be on is key. They can help you gradually start slowly. Um, many times I have people do it just three nights a week. And then if they do okay after a couple of weeks, and then we add a night. Um, so it's really getting in with a good practitioner who is able to know their products very, very well, because there's a lot of companies and products out there that make retinols and retinoic acids. Um, if you look at the, you know, the cosmeceutical companies that are out there, it's astronomical. I live and breathe this industry, and it's hard for me to keep up with absolutely everything. And so I feel like many times even brides are like bombarded with a lot of uh, what treatments I should be doing. Should I get a laser? Should I get a deep chemical peel? Should I get injectables or, you know, you name it, all of the different options that are out there. So my best advice with regarding that would be get a clinician and a facialist that you trust um, and follow up with that person. If you start a new skincare regime, typically it's going to take about six weeks before you start noticing the difference in your skin with the products, um, long term, meaning your cleanser, your exfoliating, you know, keeping the pH balance in your skin. So, getting with someone that you trust that can then, after you know, five six weeks, say, okay, let's switch this up a little bit, is is key. Um, I always say you can't group on around your face, and no, um, so you've got to go to somebody who's able to see those those differences. You can't really Amazon your face because who are you going to have to call if you start having an issue and you need someone that's reliable, that you're able to, you know, have them, you know, come back in and get in a, on a routine schedule. Typically, um, if someone can do a facial about every six to eight weeks, that's lovely. You know, I know our lives are crazy and it's hard and, you know, being able to prioritize is, is sometimes very, very hard. Um, kind of where that number comes from is when you have a skin cell that's at the basal layer, it takes about that time for it to work its way up to the outer layer of your skin, which is what you would then be dermaplaning off. So when you get a facial and you're getting a good steam and products and serums and massage and, you know, whether it's an oxygen treatment, whatever it is that you're doing, that's nourishing those new healthy baby cells. And so that's kind of what we're wanting to do. And that's the kind of the premise of getting on a routine schedule with whoever that is. You know, find someone that you love, you know, wherever city that you're in, find someone that you click with and that you feel comfortable with their philosophy um, and that, that it matches yours. So there's there's a lot of great clinicians out there. That's awesome. So I know like in terms of with you and your journey and your background and I mean, I just think that's unique in its, itself because not everyone is going to have that background in wound care. Like people ask me all the time, they're like, what makes you different about wedding planner? <laughs> you know, and I'm like, 
well, we're all, you can never compare apples to apples. Like we're all different. We've all had different experiences. We've been trained differently. There's no other planner in this industry that has a psychology background, a healthcare background and rope psychology and then EMR with electronic medical records that you're very familiar with. Nobody has that. And I know that because going to all of these all of these conferences <laughs> and people are, you know, sharing their background and sharing their knowledge and what makes them unique. Not a lot of people have that and with what I do. And I feel like with you saying like the background in aesthetics and the passion and the wound care and and I feel like that does make you unique because you have that knowledge and the passion for the skin. Um, so one of my questions for you was what makes you unique, but I feel like we already answered that. Um, I know that just like what you said, like the preparation and just the knowledge that you have from your background, um, and just the knowledge in the products and the treatments and, um, the fact that you like to try them out before you're like, Hey, try this out. Um, I think says a lot. And so, um, I guess like what's the number one thing or service that people come to you and they're like, I don't want anyone else to do that. Like, is there that one thing that you're just like, this is what people, this is how we start our relationship. And then it works in to other things as your body changes. Like you said with pregnancy, which I don't know anything about that. I could ask my sister all day long. Um, and then, you know, as seasons change, as stress levels change and, and all of those things, like you said, but how do people usually start the relationship with you? Many times uh, it will be an event um, just because I've, I've just many years ago decided that was really the focus that I wanted to go down. And so when I finished the program at Aveda and I was in solo practice in Green Hills for a little while just doing aesthetics, I started researching what are people doing and what are um, folks doing before the Oscars and the Grammys and the oxygen treatment kept coming up. Um, so intraceuticals, the Australian uh, infusion treatment was really brought over for, by Madonna. She was kind of the big one that brought it from Australia, tr totally believed in it. There's a rumor she has a, a machine in every one of her houses um, but Gina Brooke is her makeup artist, and she is still a global ambassador for intraceuticals. And so I kept seeing that come up, and I kept thinking, we we're in Nashville, and I knew I had a place in my heart for brides and pre-event, and so I wanted to specifically target treatments that would be great for that demographic. And so I reached out to a, a clinician in New York, and ended up flying there, meeting with her, talking with her about it, and was sold. I called my husband and said, okay, this is what I want to do. Um, you know, check, please, because I'm ready to, to launch this. And then my relationship with her was able to just bloom. And she has been one of my, if not the biggest mentor that I've had in this industry regarding working with brides and pre-events. She did a lot of film work and... Um, then she's the one that I've worked fashion week with the last couple of years and just being able to mentor with her, um, and know what intraceuticals is going to do. Um, because as I was saying earlier, you, you don't have a lot of time and you want to know what result you're going to get. And many times it's similar with brides that week gets real crazy and hectic for, for a lot of people. So there's a lot of things happening. So I want to feel confident in the treatment that I'm doing and know what it's going to do. Um, so, Getting the word out about that probably is what brings a lot of people here. And then we're able to talk about other treatments that um, maybe would complement their skin or could be a long-term thing. Aqua Gold is another incredible new treatment that I've started, which is it's a little bit like microneedling in the fact that it's a small sterile chamber that has 20 stainless steel, surgical stainless steel, teeny tiny needles, smaller than a hair. And what you do is you micro needle that into the skin, but you're micro needling in Botox and filler, which is a game changer. You never have you been able to do that before. It works on a totally different level because 
you're not injecting it into the muscle like you would typically with Botox to relax the muscle. You are creating small micro channels and putting that filler and Botox more superficially. So, you know, the Kardashians are all over it. The Real Housewives are all over it. I have some artists here in Nashville that is, it's just, it's a beautiful treatment. And so I like, I rank that up there with my oxygen treatment. A lot of times people will come in the week before, get an aqua gold, and then two days before their wedding, come in for an intraceuticals oxygen treatment. It's a beautiful combination. And so I, that has really become one of my really big treatments pre-event, just because it's so different. You know, it's great for people that aren't, you know, quite ready for needles or maybe have a little needle anxiety. Um, I can numb the face a little bit. Um, it's not painful at all. I feel like it hurts less than getting your teeth cleaned. Uh, it sounds like it would be painful, but it's not, you know, really, um, because it, the little teeny tiny needles are so different. The beautiful effect of it is... I only use medical grade hyaluronic acid, which is the same type of filler that would be injected. So it's from the pharmaceutical company. The Botox that you add to it works superficially, so it's beautiful for pore size. So it will help contract the pores. It will help with some sweating. So if I have artists that need to be on stage for two or three hours, it helps their makeup stay on longer for a bride who's got a whole day of events it's a beautiful option for them as well. So those are kind of my two big pre-event. And then we get into our, what are we doing daily for skincare? You know, I liken it all to, you're not just going to do an, a, a treatment once every six months and get the results that you really, really want. It's kind of a comprehensive plan um, of addressing topical skincare. It's about stress levels. It's about you know, changing up your plan, as you mentioned, with the seasons. Um, it's not like, and I'll tell a lot of times my brides, you would not go run the Boston Marathon just by practicing your running. You're going to look at your diet. You're going to look at your stress. You're going to look at your, your mental focus. All of those things that trainers, and clearly I'm not a runner, so I don't know all the, all the details, but there's a lot that goes into it other than just lacing up your shoes and going to run a marathon. It's very similar to your skin. We're looking at the whole picture, the holistic person. And that's why I love to have people come in and get to spend that hour with them. And we can talk about what's going on and, you know, just addressing the big picture, which is the Ayurvedic philosophy of mind and body, you know. So I like to be able to spend that time, which is the biggest reason why I wanted to do my own practice is I like to block off time. I don't want anyone saying your client needs to be out the door by so-and-so time. It's my decision, and I can spend all the time that my clients need, and I, I, I love that. That's why I wanted to do it. One of the questions, which you already addressed it, was like, really, what do your clients love? And the time they spend with you because you are passionate and you do care about, like, them and their skin. It's not just like pushing products. And so I often have people out there like, what do you use? What is this? What is this? And, you know, I just tell them. And um, but it was funny because last night I was in a meeting with, with a bride and her mom's like, does this company send this to you so you'll talk about it? Like, do they pay you? Like, is that like a, <laughs> it was just funny. I'm like, there are some companies that do that, but I like I'm unless I use it and I believe in it, I'm not just going to talk about products because I am getting paid. Like that's not why. Now, do some people do that? Sure. Um, there was a big thing that came out about Amazon having people go on and leave all these reviews and people weren't really being authentic with it. And like, yes, you can get all this skincare off of Amazon and you might save five or ten dollars, but it's your face like that's an investment in what you're do, especially if you're doing TV and events and photo and video and how much money you're spending on your makeup artist and your hair. And it, I mean, it's, hair treatment is a whole different thing, but you can always put a wig on and you can always put extensions on, okay? Like, let's be honest. But when it comes to your face and your makeup, like, yes, makeup can cover up and fix a lot of things. It really can. 
But in me helping a salon owner open up for hair and makeup for a whole year and being around that, it's just like there's people that come in for trials all the time and they're like, what's your skincare regimen? And some people are like, oh, I just, I don't wash my face. Like they don't, they don't know what they don't know. And so the whole purpose is to educate people at a young age. I am so thankful I was in healthcare very young. I played in the first Botox conference that was here in Nashville with Deb Sherman, like for 800 plus women. And I remember my mom was like, oh, that's bad. Like, no, 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 that's needles. And I'm like, you're so not educated in this. And you get a free American Express gift card. It was like 50 bucks. I'm like, you can either use that towards Botox and they, or you can just use the gift card. I think it was sponsored by American Express. And they were trying to educate people about it and the effects of it and like how it came up. And yes, there have been some crazy things happen. And yes, people have had an allergic reaction to things, but it's all in how you have a relationship with a practitioner. I mean, a hundred percent. Um, excuse me. So for people that are listening that may not know of anyone in their city or their town, um, it sounds like you have some relationships with people in New York and in other areas. So if people have questions about their skin, do you do, how do you feel about like FaceTime and Zoom and like jumping online with people's um, questions? I know that some people are doing that now where not that they're giving advice, but they're helping people through and like they'll do consultations through FaceTime. I mean, I know brides who I'm not even their planner, <laughs> but they're, they like have questions about things. Do you do that sort of thing if anybody has questions? I mean, obviously, if they're in Nashville, you're in Nashville. That's where your practice is. Um, but we have a lot of listeners, even in other countries. Um, so if people have questions and they don't know who to go to or who to trust, how do you feel about them reaching out like through technology? <laughs> Absolutely. I think it's been, um, you know, technology has really changed the aesthetics game. Um, one of the skincare lines that I carry and use a lot is Dr. Obagi's Zio skincare line. And um, so I'll have people that are from out of state that maybe have moved to Nashville. I mean, it's what, 100 people a day that move into Nashville now, or people that were living in Nashville that moved to other places that I can communicate with. Um, I have, thanks to Instagram, kind of a following in California for of brides. And so I'm able to do a lot of consultation with them remotely. Absolutely, absolutely. And then what we try to do is, especially for the brides, if they're coming into Nashville to meet with you and to do some planning, um, then we schedule a facial at every visit and then just work up to... You know, I had the perfect scenario. I had a bride um, from Southern California who decided she had her bachelorette party in Nashville, and then she decided she wanted her whole wedding here in Nashville. So they had about a year to plan it. So she came, I think, four or five times during that year. I saw her at every single visit that she flew in from California and then saw her the day before her wedding. So that was the kind of the optimal scenario for sure. Um, but being able to talk to people if they do have questions, I'm absolutely all about that. So if our listeners want to find out more, um, you have so on Instagram and we'll put those in the show notes where you can follow Lisa on Instagram, her website, we'll put that in. And then she said consultations are always complimentary the first time. So you can always call and schedule. I know some of you are talkers, and so you can always schedule a call. Um, and her number is 615-200-8304. And um, I'll have her do her website and Instagram. And then also she actually has a special offer for anyone listening today, which is an amazing offer. I will say everything we have talked about today, except the Botox filler and the, the microblading of what was the other filler with the, the Botox, Aquagold. the Aqua Gold. I have not had that done, but you better believe that I'll like be next in line for it. I'm all about like, I'm the girl. 
I would rather s- invest and spend money on skincare and technology. I don't need new clothes. I mean, you know, every once in a while, but it's like, I'm not a shopper. I would rather just be smart about those things because I do feel like it's an investment. Every time I see Deb Sherman, she's like, that investment face on those videos. <laughs> she's so funny. Um, but it's true. And it's not about like, the because brides are, well, how much does that cost? Well, why do you have an attitude like that? I mean, I, I don't think that you know, you don't know what you don't know because there is a value that you place on that. And if you value your skin and your photo and your video and, I mean, you should, then there's some things that that I can definitely guide you on that I've had experience with. And I will say that if you're like getting married next week or something, and you're listening to this, like I will say, like Lisa shared the patchology and there's like these eye, little eye things that, um, that are just awesome. And then like the night before you can put on these five minute hydrating masks I've also done the foot mask and your feet peel for like a week and a half. And then then it's amazing. It's kind of gross, but (laughs) it's like popping that bubble wrap. (laughs) It's like I would just sit there and peel all of it. It was so gross. And my girls in the office, they're like, what are you doing? They're like, that is so disgusting. I'm like, not until you actually do it. And then it just, it feels so, so good. good. Like you just have to try it. They also have a lip one. So like during the winter, like even once a week, I'll do a lip mask just because my lips get so chapped. I'm constantly talking. (laughs) Shocker. So when you talk a lot, your lips get really, really, really dry. So those are like some quick, inexpensive things that I think are very valuable. But but again, just like with anything, like we're doing social media and having a message, you have to be consistent with a regimen. You have to. That's like the one thing that I've learned about life, not just skincare and not just owning a business. Um, but if you'll let our listeners know your Instagram website and then what they can get, which is awesome. Yay. So Instagram is Lisa, L-I-S-A underscore Kaiser, K-E-Y-S-E-R. And then the website is Kaiser Aesthetics, K-E-Y-S-E-R-A-E-S. T-H-E-T-I-C-S, and we'll have that on linked as well to the podcast. Um, and there's some great videos on my website as well, some really good, neat videos. I think of Kim Kardashian's Aqua Gold treatment that she had before the Met Gala, I believe. So, you, you know, if people are interested in that, you're able to kind of see a little bit more about um, that, that treatment. The Intraceuticals Oxygen Treatment, the beautiful thing about that is you're going to get pretty instant results. So if it's a situation where it's just been really, really hectic and you haven't been able to do a lot of self-care and skin care, I have a lot of people that all of a sudden they have this event that their husband didn't tell them about. And so surprise, honey, you need, we've got this red, you know, black, black tie thing on Saturday night. The intraceuticals oxygen treatment is a beautiful instant gratification for sure. Those build on each other as well. It's multiple weights of hyaluronic acid, so it's going to give you that pretty glow and that really pretty finish for photography. Um, And so, for your listeners today, we're going to do 20% off. The treatment is typically $150, um, but just let me know whenever you call and we chat that you were able to listen to the podcast and we can get it set up. This was Lisa's first podcast. She did so (laughs) awesome. I'll take some pictures in um, her office today so you guys can see some of the stuff. I'm a very visual person, but obviously when you're driving and you're listening to podcasts, you can't see things. Um, But of course, Amanda will put it on the blog and can see some of the things that she is using in her practice. So thank you so much for listening, everybody, to another episode of Weddings Unveiled. And be sure to tune in next week so you do not miss any of the juicy details. Have a great day. Bye. If you found this podcast helpful, please share it with your friends. And I'm so very grateful if you will leave a review. Be sure you are a subscriber so you never, ever miss the juicy details of Weddings Unveiled. 
Also, be sure that you're a part of my email list. And if not, you can sign up at AngelaProfit.com where I share valuable resources and exclusive products with only my subscribers. Before I go, I want to ask you, if you have a story or a product to share with the wedding and event industry, please let me know. To be considered as a guest on Weddings Unveiled, visit AngelaProfit.com and submit a podcast guest form. Until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, head over to AngelaProfit.com.